condition of the patient can you please mention uh, Robert because it looks as if you are operating from the side yes I always operate from the patient's right side so we're going to identify the ports and for the way I do it we're not going to pay any attention at all to the umbilicus the umbilicus is on the paniculus and may hang down and I don't think it's a good point so what we want to look for is the xiphy sternum as our point and we want to find the rib margins feel the rib margins and then we're going to create the first port thank you thank you the first port will be our camera port and it's basically one or two hand breaths below the xiphy sternum now further down and then you have a, a, a poor look at the upper part of the body and further up and then you have a poor look at your gastrojejunostomy so what you want is a distance which is about one and a half hand breaths one to two hand breaths below the xiphy sternum and that's going to be our camera port okay all the other ports and there are four other ports are about two finger breaths below the costal margin now remember that the patient is going to stand up in just a minute we will bring the patient all the way up and we're going to be working with two hands we're going to have a left hand here which is in the xiphy sternum sub xiphy port and this will be our liver retractor so we don't use in this case a liver retractor all we use is your left hand grasper so there's one port here this is going to be midline about two or three finger breaths below the xiphy sternum uh, Robert, just interrupting you. Yes, sir. Am I right to say that your first port is slightly higher than what people would put in a Roux-en-Y bypass? I think so. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the next port, so the, this is my left hand working port in the midline here. And then we're going to go about to the uh, midclavicular line, the distance of what you have to so you don't fight each other and these two ports right now if I was going to work on the patient in this case you can see I'm out of position so we want to bring these two working ports up and look at me so we're going to be doing that now we have one more port which is a five millimeter port here this is going to be a grasper which is used to assist a little bit and also to hold the loop of bowel to do the anastomosis and then we have a port here which is on the um, patient's right side the midclavicular line and this is a 12 millimeter port because at the moment where we do the gastric to jejunal anastomosis we will take the camera out and move it here to this lateral port that will let us look this way and then the staple gun will then be parallel to the long axis of the body that means then we'll put the loop of bowel over this part of the staple gun the cartridge and take the anvil and put it into the stomach parallel to the line of the lesser curvature of the stomach then fire take that out and then the camera goes back and then we'll finish so these are our ports you have uh, uh, how many 12 mm ports uh, Dr. Ratley? Um, we have 12, 12, 12, 12, 5 4, 12 and 1, 5 yes and you don't have to use that many but my bias is generally for a very heavy patient trying to limit the ports to help you a little bit I don't think makes that that much value but for retractor in the epigastric port do, uh, can't you do with the smaller port I'm sorry for retracting the liver to the epigastric port uh, can't you do with the smaller port then absolutely but this port which almost the entire case will take a five millimeter you're going to see there's a critical step where, where we need to put the 12 millimeter staple gun through there okay so I will show you that in a minute so right. your question is exactly right my opinion is no do you want to put the various needle in? do they have a visit port or do you have a visit port or do you want to add you want a visit port sir? no, no we don't. you it's want to okay. just do a various? I mean, is that okay with you? so we're going to use a various needle and I'll be talking to is it okay? this is not working yet this is not so we're going to get a different busy port. Uh, I'm sorry. We're going to get a different varies needle. Um, so once we do this, let's go through in our mind because we have a minute how we do the operation. So let's do the entire operation, and you can point the camera now at me. So let's in our minds do the whole operation. We have our five ports, and here are the steps. 
We're going to lift the liver slightly and have our, our assistant retract the stomach, greater curvature, down into the patient's left. We'll skeletonize the lesser curvature and then a staple gun comes in with the left hand pointing down to the left lower quadrant. And most Roux and Y surgeons, that's a big difference. Most of their operating is from down up. So this we want to come down from the midline port. And the reason for this, we want as long a gastric pouch as possible. A short gastric pouch, in my opinion, leads to bile reflux esophagitis. A long gastric pouch is equivalent to an anterectomy. Do we have it? No? Okay. A long gastric pouch protects the esophagus from bile reflux. Bile in the stomach can happen. It happens every day in all of us. Bile in the esophagus is not acceptable. So when we create the gastric pouch, a Roux and Y surgeon often takes the staple gun in from below and up and ends up with a short gastric pouch and a malfunctioning MGB because it's more like the Mason type bypass. So what we want to do, in my opinion, is skeletonize at the junction between the body and the antrum and bring the staple gun in from above inferiorly. That creates our perpendicular staple line, perpendicular to the lesser curvature. And that begins the... Yes? Good. Hello? Yes. Sir, in the meantime, can we go to other roti? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Bye-bye. Gas on? Robert, you'll be, there. You'll, you'll be there on the screen, so we'll keep switching. Okay. Whatever you say. Gas on. We're just inflating. Uh, organizers, can we have one theater on each screen, please? I Okay. Can we have Robert yes. surgery happening on one of the screens? Uh, Sandeep, can you hear me? Uh, there's no audio with Sandeep. Sandeep, can you hear me? Hello. Can the can the audio visual in the hospital? Yes, sir. We want one surgery that is Robert's surgery on one of the screens, and secondly, we are not getting audio connection with Dr. Sandeep Agarwal. Although we can hear what he is saying, I don't think he can hear us. Can I make this decision, Dr. Sandeep Agarwal? You are on, sir. Uh, Sandeep, can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, Arun Prasad here from... Hi, good morning. Uh, good morning, welcome. With this marked reverse Trendelenburg, also you notice that we, all, we don't really need a liver retractor. We're going to be looking down here. Can we raise the TV monitor a little bit? Is your left hand broker through the epigastric port? The left, hand left hand instrument. Right, the left hand is mid-epigastric. Yes. That's this. this. Is mid -epigastric, okay. And you can see there's falciform. Yeah. Good. And so what we're going to do here is we're just going to be grasping. You see the lesser curvature? Yeah. And you can see the crow's foot? Okay. Perfect, perfect. Thank you. Okay. So what we want to talk about then is the anatomy of the lesser curvature. We're at the junction between the body and the antrum of the stomach. We're at the crow's foot. And what we like to do is create a long gastric pouch, a lot like a sleeve, that gives us a maximum distance between our gastrojejunostomy and our esophagus. And what is the approximate capacity of this uh, pouch? Good question and you should never ask that with an MGB because we don't care what the volume I mean, is. We this know is you want to keep it long but uh, then we should know how much uh, uh, about it is. Uh, like well, in three we have 150, about 150 cc. I apologize. Okay, you may be right. I Forgive me. I would say if someone asks me about the volume of the gastric pouch for the MGB I say uh, please forgive me I don't care the volume. What I care is that we recreate a long, narrow extension of the esophagus and that that, whether it's 100 or 150, I don't think will make a difference. Right. So now I think we're displaying, I hope you can see a yes, nice... Yes, we can see that. Robert, what's the epigastric port doing right now? The mid-epigastric port is in my left hand and it's retracting here. Okay. And you can see Dr. Kular is retracting the stomach this way. 
I've got my I've got uh, Can we just see the outside view uh, as to what's going in from each broker? I think they took the camera out so I don't think we yeah, can show you. Yeah, I can see that. We can see it there. Oh, okay. Now, this patient has been given heparin. So that means that everything is slow. Now, Dr. Maha no, Dr. Nawari was just here saying I have to go faster and I apologize. We're going to go slower because we don't want any bleeding. That's no, 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 stop, stop, stop. So th again, on my cases, routinely, we do not have suction. So that's, I sh probably should not say that, but the hope is we will have no bleeding. Uh, Robert, the view is actually a mirror image, what we are seeing on the external view. So can I request you to just hold for a second, take out the telescope and with the telescope show us the ports. Okay. What we're going to see is when we staple. Uh, every step is designed to be safe and simple. I know Dr. Prasad doesn't like for me to call the operation simple, but I think I am only an average surgeon. So I try and make every step such that an average surgeon will not suffer, will not complain, will not struggle. I want every step to be simple. Right now, there's not a drop of blood. And that's what we want at the end of this case, not even a drop of blood. Dr. Rutledge? Yes, sir. Uh, good morning. This is Dr. Ashish Hoja from Ludhiana. Yes, sir. Hi. How are you? Absolutely fine. We are loving the way you are uh, do, uh, proceeding. The only thing I want to ask is the areas of the stomach when we make a pouch, the areas of the stomach which become white or we might say there might be a slight area of thermal burn, do they make any difference to the long term anastomosis Are there any chance of leak? Um, I think that. that's a good question. So if you look here, I think I did exactly right in my opinion. It's not so close that you see actual thermal burn on the serosa of the stomach. But okay. if you did a little bit, and you were worried about that, just put your staple gun slightly above that area if you were to burn a hole in the stomach itself. Um, may I stop for a second and point out this angle? So let me stop and say, if you're an MGB surgeon, pay attention to this angle. Look at the staple gun here. What you want to see is the staple gun comes in from the left upper corner of the screen and comes down to the right almost like it's bisecting the screen. And the goal here is to get as much of this gastric pouch to be utilized for the MGB. It's not critical, every inch is not critical, but just, you see, by being care, this staple gun through this point is very different than a Roux and Y surgeon with a staple gun ha having up here. So you may add many, many centimeters to the total length of your pouch. No, no, it's okay. You can let go, I think. Can you let go? Are you using Robert, the straight or articulated? No, I never use articulated unless I have to. Robert, this is a step which I find difficult because after opening the stapler, suddenly the space gets reduced because you can't pull the stapler back. <laughs> That's right. So That's why we use a 45 instead of a 60. Uh -huh. So we just take a minute here. You don't, you don't have to struggle. Can you pull the bougie slightly out? I think 45 is a very good point. Yeah, I can even use a 30 sometimes. So take your time here. This is going to be the tip of your gastric pouch. And what you'd like in a perfect world is to have the crotch of the staple gun be right on the lesser curvature of the stomach. Can you move your grasper? So Robert, when we use the first stapler for the sleeve, we always prefer to use a green, green cartridge. Yes, sir. And you are firing now on the antrum only. Why do we use the blue cartridge here and a green cartridge there? Because yes, a green cartridge would be good. I don't disagree with that. Now, let me show you one thing about the way I staple. I'm going to pull the first staple gun and then, can you hold this? Hold it. Yeah, good. Thank you. Excuse me. So, so in an echelon, we won't be able to use the benefit of this 45. 
It's only with the Covidian we can. Right. If you use a, an Ethicon staple gun, it will take uh, a little bit more difficulty to get this angle. So you have to give up a couple of centimeters on the length of your gastric pouch. Now, right now, I've walked away from the table. I'm not near the operating room table because if I'm close to the operating room table, I will be firing the staple gun. Because surgeons, when they have their hands on a staple gun, are firing the staple gun. Now so on the dance floor, I think. So I'm walking away. Yeah. I'm walking away. And right now, I'm allowing the tissue to be compressed and to create hemostasis. And can I ask you one more question, uh, Robert? Yes. What do you think of the tristaplers? I love them, but again, I'm not allowed to have them. <laughs> Dr. Kular is helping with some of the adhesions. Now I'm going to pull the trigger on the staple gun just one more time, just a little bit. And so if you watch an MGB, it's fairly boring. What we'd like to see is no difficult steps. Every step should be something that your intern, your resident can do. Every step used needs judgment, I think, and intelligence, but my bias is every step should be simple and easily done. Nothing should be challenging. If you find that the steps are challenging, my bias is you've often made a bad decision. Yeah. So how so many seconds do you leave it compressing? Um, it changes based on how many people are watching me. <laughs> the more people watch me, the more time I take. <laughs> the more heparin, the longer I take. So I apologize. Uh, this is not the best part to watch. But what we'd like to demonstrate, if all goes well today, is when we use no suction, no clips, nothing. Now, and that goal R is... Robert, you are so particular about the bleeding. Would you consider using seam guards in any of these cases? Well, I've done 6,000 and uh, I certainly have had some bleeding, but my bias is to go back and do 6,000 cases with seam guard would be hundreds of thousands of dollars. And my bias is if you do this slowly, I don't get bleeding. So I don't see a reason to add the seam guard. And I think, as you know, the research on the seam guard is a little bit mixed. All right, let's look. We're going to take the staple gun down, and I've made all this talk about bleeding. Let's see, do we have bleeding? Grasper? <coughs> what laparoscopic system you are using? Oh, it's ancient. It's old. It's terrible. You, Dr. Ma, Dr. Uh, Bondari has better instruments in his dog lab than I have in my hospital. <laughs> I thought I might bring my patients to Dr. Bondari's lab. Okay, now we're going to look, see how we did. And we're not surprised, we waited half an... Oh, no, there is a, there's a drop of blood. But this is what we'd like to see for the rest of the case, an almost perfect staple line. That's what we want to see. And it takes time, but what I found is when I take the extra time... I actually have a shorter case. Can I have the harmonic? Thank you. And that was the 45 cut. Yeah, and cut the 45 it. is nice. You don't think anything happens to the staples when you do the harmonic? Yes, I think it's terrible except on the tip here where I'm going to do the anastomosis. So I would never do that anywhere except for that point because that's where I'm going to do my anastomosis. Now if you look, uh, this is coming in from the right lateral port. It's coming in from the right 
lateral port. So that 12 millimeter port that you ask about, we're actually using here. And this is a 60? This, this is a 60, yeah. Uh, without the bougie? Uh, no, no bougie. And I don't, I don't use the bougie nearly as much as I used to. Okay, I'm going to fire once to get started on the compression, and now I'm leaving the table, so I'm open for questions. Uh, Robert, this is Dr. Sarfraz. Sir. Uh, my question is, the first fire which you made is a oh, 45. Yeah. Good, good. What we do is we fire a little longer, and uh, we have a very wide right. base. Now, that serves two purposes. One is that the assistant is able to hold it laterally. There's some space. And two, when we fire this stapler, the first vertical fire, then we readjust. Having a bigger base at the bottom allows us to have an easier GJ anastomosis. I know you like this word easy. So that's why I said we have an easier GJ anastomosis. Your thoughts on this, please? Absolutely. Almost make the gastric pouch like a... Um, the, the foot of a duck. It sticks out. It's bulbous. And you're exactly right that you do not need to be making the pouch narrow at this point. Just the opposite. All we're doing here is roughly beginning where we work. We're not trying to get this very narrow at this point. We're just getting started. So we take our time here. Our goal is there should be no bleeding. No bleeding. So we're just taking our time, and I apologize, it doesn't make it as enjoyable to watch. When no one watches me, I staple very fast. <laughs> but it's nice to see that there is no bleeding and the whole field is nice and dry. That's my bias. That's our goal. And if, even if we take an extra half an hour and there's no bleeding, my bias is I would take maybe that extra half an hour to try and control the bleeding. So if you look at my average operating time when I staple slowly, it's actually as good as or better than when I staple fast because I end up controlling bleeders. Also, there are different places on the stomach. Okay, now let's look. 60? Oh, right. Excellent. Uh, no, not yet. Thank you. Next firing also from the same port? No. Now we change ports. And telescope? So now we're going to go to the mid-clavicular line on the patient's left, my right hand. If there's a little adhesion, you can see the front pancreas. Uh-huh. And again, no bougies in place. This is all kind of just, you can let go, Dr. Kular, please. This is all just judgment. None of this is really important yet, because you'll be seeing in just a minute what kind of camera. Yeah, what do you think? It's okay. I like it. Okay, so now we're going to close the first one, and I'll step away from the table again. I'm open for questions. We are. Honored today, we have some visitors in the operating room. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Raju Kular. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Ah, yes. Dr. Shabi Ahmed from Allahabad. Ah, welcome. Welcome. Robert, can we just see the external view for a few minutes, please? Pardon me? Can we just see the external view of the four sure. instruments yeah. just for a few minutes? So, this is mid-epigastric and a camera port, so it's the low midline port. Here's the left-hand port, here's the right-hand port, this is where the staple gun is going through, and now this will run all the way up to the EG junction through this staple line. Then we have a lateral port here on the left side, patient's right side, and then we have the five millimeter port, this is where your assistant does a little bit of work here. But again, the goal is that every step is to be simple and easy, but look at it, it should look like a diamond two tips and two tips. So in the United States, this would be the same as a baseball diamond. There's home plate, first base, shortstop, second base, third base. Thank you. Roughly a diamond. Dr. Rutledge? Yes, sir. Isn't the patient position left up? Patient's position is left up, yes, sir. Right.
And again, see, we just advance a little bit. I was going to say there are different parts of the stomach and different areas where you can worry about bleeding. The first staple line on the lesser curvature is often highly vascular, and so that area we take more time. As we get up into the body of the stomach, we'll speed up, and then we get to the EG junction, we'll slow way down. We can stand bleeding along the body, but we can't stand bleeding at the EG junction. So several things are going to happen and change when we get to the EG junction. Uh, Robert, this is what exactly the tri-staple advantage, isn't it, in these cases? Absolutely. I love the tri-staple. I am poor in the United States. I have to use blue. So, and sometimes they even make me use Ethicon. So it's a hard life for me. Our experience with the tri-stapler is very good, in fact. Yes, yes, I agree. I am envious. I want to come and work in India, where you have all the good equipment. I keep telling Dr. Rajesh Kular, I said, you must invite me. I'll come work for you. So there we can see we're finishing up. And here, we're not in a very dangerous bleeding area, so I go a little faster. Again, not a drop of blood. That's our goal. Now there's our bougie. And you see we have that kind of duck foot here. It's a little wide, just as you suggested. Dr. Safras? Uh-huh, 60. Grasper? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good, stop. So now stop. you're introducing the bougie now. Yeah, stop. Go back just a little bit. Here you are, Dr. Kular. Thank you. Staple gun? Uh, Staple. Robert, the second firing also looks quite horizontal. Is that right? Ideally, you want to not worry about thinness. Don't worry about thinness. The young MGB surgeon is trying to make a thin pouch. Down here, don't worry. We're going to do a gastrojejunostomy here. Make this wide, as I think Dr. Safra suggested. That's his wisdom. I agree 100%. We're going to make this plenty thin. Don't worry about that to start off with. And again, see how the left hand acts as our liver retractor. And now what we're going to do is we'll change, Dr. Kular, can you let go? And then you'll grasp right about here. Now there's the trick. What you're going to do is you're going to get your assistant to grasp the other side. And you want his motion to be up into the left shoulder blade. Up into the left shoulder blade. And that begins to create your narrow pouch. And again, what we want to take a minute and try and line up the staple lines. Oh, the one bleeding is from the grasper. <laughs> okay, let go. I think that's good. You think okay? And so now we're out on the body of the stomach. I think it's less likely to bleed, so I go a little bit faster here. And we'll pick up the pace until we get to the EG junction where we'll slow down again. Again, what I'd like to emphasize is nothing that we're doing is diff No, no, that's okay. We'll do that in a minute. Go ahead and fire again. Every, th every step, you should not see the surgeon struggle. What you want to see is every step is the surgeon is at ease. The operation is so simple and straightforward that the surgeon is comfortable and confident at every step. If that's the case, to me, that's a measure of a pretty good surgery. If it also gives excellent results, that combination gets close to ideal. So what we're trying to do is, when you watch the surgeon, my opinion is, see every step to be simple, clean, and without struggle, without difficulty. Totally I agree with it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to finish this staple line just like you would a sleeve. Then we'll pick up the loop of intestine. And from there, we'll do a gastrojejunostomy and we'll be done. So the steps hopefully are clear and simple. And we're on the way now. The next critical point that we'll reach in just a minute or two will be the EG junction. And the goal there is to recognize that what we've been taught by the sleeve doctors is it can leak. I have a good friend of mine who started doing MGBs and dissected up near the EG junction and got a leak and he's been, the patient has been sick for three months here in India. So 
stay away from the EG junction. That's what we'll be doing. Again. Hello. Yes. Yeah, this is Dr. Sarfraz again. Yes, sir. Uh, we've had some papers on sleeve gastrectomies, like Dr. Belange's paper, and he's uh, said that he's done about 500 plus cases with the sleeve. Now he's staying away from the EG junction, away from the Belsi parafine. It doesn't dissect the left who's at all. Yes. So do you think this gentleman is behaving more like Rutledge? Well, I wouldn't want to impugn his character by saying that, but I would say <laughs> I agree 100% with that approach. It's true, brilliant, excellent surgeons can dissect routinely the EG junction. In my opinion, an average surgeon like me, if I go to the EG junction 100 or 200 times, one of those times I'll come away with a leak. I cannot stand the leak. I cannot stand an EG leak. So I am frightened. I have put my hand in a hole and been bitten by the cobra. I'm not going to put my hand in that hole again. Stay away from the EG junction is my advice from my 6,000 cases. So this one you notice a little bit faster. We're not near the EG junction yet. And again, everything looks good and dry. Staple gun, staple. So Robert, this being a low pressure area, and uh, unless it is a badly done at the OG junction, they don't usually leak, isn't it? Uh, Dr. Reddy, you're embarrassing me because now I have to admit that I have had leaks from the EG junction with the MGB. Uh -huh. And they are terrible leaks if they leak from the EG junction. I would agree maybe that the worst leak is maybe if you have a pylorus, but I can tell you it's plenty bad to have an MGB leak from the EG junction. And I can tell you there's a, a friend of ours that has a leak like that in India now because he went to the EG junction and he wishes and I wishes he'd never done it. I see. So okay. don't go there. Even if you think, oh, I don't have a pylorus, it's easy for me. I don't agree. Okay, thanks. Now we're getting up to EG junction, so we'll begin to slow down the compression. Take advantage, the full advantage of direct pressure. We're compressing the tissue, we're pushing out the fluid, we want maximum compression and maximum hemostasis. On my table, we have no suction catheter. On my table, there's no clip applier. On my table, if you look at the back of the table, it's empty. There's nothing, none of these other pieces of equipment because it's a simple little operation. If you can do that, you can convert a difficult and dangerous operation into one that's actually easier and takes less time than a breast biopsy. Imagine MGB, imagine curing diabetes in less time than it takes to do a breast biopsy. And also, imagine that you can tailor this operation for each patient. You can use this operation with a long bypass on super obese with excellent results. You can use this operation for a thin patient with diabetes by a short bypass and a large gastric pouch. Finally, God forbid that your patient suffers a complication, excess weight loss, inadequate weight loss, any of the above. The great thing about the MGB is it's similarly trivially easy to revise. Just as you're seeing the operation being performed easily with no stress and no difficulties, the div revision of the surgery is similarly equally easy. So Rob Robert, I have just saw one new title called sleeve bypass. Yes. Is, is it the same as MGB? I think it might be, but there is another one that's like a sleeve with a bypass where they do the gastrojejunostomy adjacent to the duodenum and distal to the duodenum. And that is a little different. I see. Okay. Okay, so now we look here. And now I'm going to say something. We have this last little bit of tissue here. And so what I would like to do is remind you of the gold finger. Does everybody remember the gold finger? Yeah, yes, everybody. Remembers. The gold finger is terrible. In my opinion, we could bluntly dissect through that area, but what we're going to do instead, in my approach, is to lift this up. You can see where it is, and we're going to dissect under direct vision that area. Thank you. Just very meticulously and very slowly. And again, what I would remind you is EG junction here, Rutledge here. 
So we'll lift here. So you could probably very safely just bluntly do this to section. That's what most of us did with the old Goldfinger. We would just bluntly go through this with the understanding that 99 times out of 100, this dissection bluntly would be safe. But my bias is I can't stand just 99 times out of 100, so I recommend take an extra moment and do this under direct vision, actually divide that, maybe that, see that little short gastric there? What if that were to be torn with the blunt dissection of the tip of the staple gun? So I say just take your time. And I think we're almost through. You can see we can pretty easily get prepared to pass our staple gun. But again, we're not in a rush. Again, nothing is difficult. No step here is struggling, except maybe my cameraman. Are you okay? Good. What do you recommend for the beginners, whether to use a liver retractor or not here? Um, I think there's nothing, never feel bad about using the retractor, staple gun, but what I think I'd like to demonstrate is as you become more comfortable, staple gun, as you become more comfortable, the number of instruments, the use of instruments, I think as a new surgeon, you should have suction on the table okay. in your first 100. As a new surgeon, have a liver retractor. As a new surgeon, have an assistant who is very skilled and knowledgeable. Okay. But as you get more confident, you're going to see that the steps that we take are pretty easy and straightforward. Staple gun, please. Thank you. I think those are the good principles one has to follow. You're going to have the risk of complications. Even though this is a straightforward operation, you'll get lost. You'll have a big patient who has a large uh, left gastric that you'll have bleeding. So all these things are risky. What do you think? So we're, I think, I'd like to demonstrate that we're well away from the EG junction. You see the staple gun point at the spleen, not at the EG junction. And this one... I'm going to talk for about a half an hour and go have lunch before I take this staple gun off. <laughs> I think it is very safe that you, are, that you are away from the belsy pad of fat and you have not dissected the left crust. So I think it should be safe actually for all practical purposes. My bias is if you're doing a sleeve, the, the sleeve doctors I have spoken with and worked with say it's critical to dissect that area because you need it for good weight loss and for resolution of potential GE reflux. For the MGB, we do not need it. We have the bypass. When I think of a bariatric procedure, I think you can fight with your left hand, which is restriction, or your right hand, which is malabsorption. Sleeve is mostly fighting with left hand. MGB, we fight with both hands. So we do not need to dissect in this area if you take my advice. Yeah, what you said is true because the sleeve, a lot of the fundus lies behind. Yes. Un unless you dissect that one, you yes. won't get an adequate resection of the fundus. Every, every, all the sleeve doctors say that. I agree with that. But if you dissect that area to get a good weight loss, my bias is maybe one out of 100, one out of 200, one out of... 500 will be a tragedy of unimaginable proportions. A three month leak where you have to see the family every day for three months. You have to talk to the nurses about the feeding and putting in the stint and all of this. So my bias is one of the reasons I, I don't choose the sleeve very often is I fear a leak. I can't stand a leak. So now we're done, and again, uh, if, I, if I wasn't being observed, I would be more quick to open this, but I'm going to wait a little extra time because I'm at the EG junction. This area, I can't stand the bleeding. So my bias is here, take your time. As we look at it, we see not a drop of blood. Not a drop of blood. We have in the U.S. a mantra. Mantra? We say... No bleeding. And then we do this. Easy case. So everyone together. No bleeding. 
Easy case. <laughs> Dr. Rutledge? Yes, sir. Praveen Bhatia, this side. Hi. How are you? I'm missing you. How are you, sir? Good. I was listening to your comment that it is as simple as breast biopsy. <laughs> it, it looks to be simple and easy in, in experts' hands, but all of us know what this junction can do. Yes. So we obviously we cannot qualify this as as simple as breast biopsy. You are right to criticize me, Dr. Kular. You are right, Dr. Bhatia. You should criticize me, and you are right to criticize me, and I am chastised because you are accurate. I am embarrassed that I said that. Not embarrassed. I but am, you are absolutely right, and we should... Wait, let me say one thing. No bleeding. Easy case. <laughs> yeah? Okay. So now we're done with this. Now let's turn our attention. We're going to go to the left gutter. Sorry? Uh, okay, yeah. We're going to go look at... Oh, oh, wait a minute. I see bleeding. No. We're going to go show you EG junction one more time. Dr. Kular is right to point that out. I should have... Yeah, it's complete. Are you happy? Yes. yes, that looks great. And you see no bleeding? No bleeding. Only thing I did, I am not a good surgeon, but I am a slow surgeon. And my slow surgery makes me a fast surgeon. Okay? All right, now we're going to look in the left gutter. And we have a little adhesion, so that might bother us. But turn here and we look at the left gutter. Uh huh. Grasper, please. Grasper. One more grasper. Thank you. Yes. And what we're going to do, there's another trick. I know that many surgeons okay, But you need one that you're going to lock. Uh -huh. Is this? Uh -huh. Both can lock, get locked. Oh, you think that's a good one? Okay. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Many surgeons divide the omentum. And what I would say is in 6,000 cases, I'd never divide the omentum. So the reason is, if you go lateral here, there's always a space right there. And you see the space here? It's right here, up high. So that means you never, the omentum is an apron, and this spot is always wide open. So don't make it difficult. Don't be dividing the omentum, in my opinion. I could be wrong, but my opinion is you never need to do it. Just very easy. Now we see there's ligament atrites. And now we're going to run the intestine. And so I'll be, I'll be counting. I won't be talking to you, and I won't take questions for just a few moments. One. Sixty, maybe go a little shorter on her. What do you think, Dr. Pillar? That's good. Can you take this grasper? I think this one's better for grasping. What do you think? It's better for me. What do you think? Yeah. I like it. It's a little oh, bigger. Is it okay? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so now I'm back with you. This is our loop, and we just put it up here in the left gutter, and we clamp it there, and then just relax. Gentle, gentle. Good. And now we turn our attention back here to our gastric pouch. And what we're going to do now is the next steps of the gastrojejunostomy. So we're going to do a gastrotomy here, enterotomy, staple, and then close it with a staple gun, or we'll hand sew it, depending on your preference today. Can we talk now? Yes, of course, sir. Robert, actually, in some patients, the momentum is very, very thick. Yes, sir. And in those cases, to get the loop up is not that easy. So in those cases, um, dividing the momentum is, is very helpful to take the loop up to anastomos. Do you agree? Well, I, I'm sure you're right. In my opinion, I've done 6,000 cases, some very thick omentum, and never had to divide the omentum. But I could be wrong. But that's just my opinion. Well, we, we take your opinion as the standard because you have the highest experience. No, no, in the no, world. no, 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 no. But it's just one opinion which you can think of. But 
I think there's always that left gutter. Always have the left gutter. Uh, Robert, is this an interior anastomosis you'll be doing? Uh, it's anterior to the staple line, but it goes through the staple line. And there's a good argument for both. And the critical thing I'll show you in just a minute is not to have the staple gun go through the lateral staple line. So now we have our gastrotomy. Yes, do you see? Are you happy? Yeah. Good. All right. No, no, don't. No, no, no. You're cool. And now we're going to do a little trick. And this is take a moment. No, no, no. Okay, so you are going to come above me because I'm going to take this out. And we'll put you in here. You might need to clean. Okay, so now we've changed that and we want to look there. Mm -hmm. Staple gun ready with a 60? No, no. Go up here. That's good. So now there's a three points we want to put on a straight line. So we'll take our assistant ear up there. Good. And we go here. No, no, it's okay. Don't, don't, no. We don't need your other hand. Yeah, good. Staple gun ready? Good. No, no, 60. 60. Can you tell us through which port you have passed this? Yeah, this is the old camera port. So what we've done now is we've gone from below, because what we want to do, first we dilate that little jejunostomy, and we'll put in the blunt tip here. You can release, Dr. Kular. Thank you, sir. Again, very gentle. You know, no struggling. Everything very easy. Thank you, Robert. That's a fantastic tip you showed there by putting the narrow one blade first. Right. And, then and now you point. notice w this is another trick. See, the mesentery of the bowel tends to want to pull it inferiorly. No, 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 no. So what you do now is you've laid the bowel on top of that. And so now with one hand, you can move it anywhere. You see, it's very simple. You see, you've got that under complete control. And you just relax. Okay. And again, some people fuss about making a small anastomosis. We're exactly opposite. The whole idea of the MGB is different than the restrictive procedures you've thought about in the past. So now we're going to slide this in. Dr. Kular is helping here and just getting ready to yeah, roll that staple line around. Good. And then look at your lateral staple line there. What we don't want is to have this staple line beyond that staple line. So you want it posterior or anterior, but not on the staple line. What do you think of that, Dr. Kalar? Yeah, do you think good. it's okay? Yeah, I think it's good. good. Yeah, pull the camera back. What do you think? I think. Uh, what do you think of that or no? And eh, no, I don't like that. It slipped. How about? No, camera back. Camera back. Uh, Robert. Yes. Uh, what do you think of that? Pardon me for my statement. Yes, sir. It's like showing candle to the sun. No, no, no. Let go. Uh, Let go. Let go. Tremendous Let go. experience. Like what I do is an anterior anastomosis here. Sure. And doing that avoids going through this staple line which is happening in front of us. Okay. So any views on that? You know, I've only, I've hardly done 20 odd cases compared to your 6,000. So <laughs> please pardon me for my. No, comment. no, no, no. That's a good point that. What I do is not necessarily right. You take it as a jumping off point and then make modifications and make it better. So um, I have a surgeon I taught in the United States uh, 10 years ago, and he will not change anything. And I come back and I say, I've learned something different. He says, no, we must never change what you've done. I said, but 
but I'm the same person. I have a new idea. He says, no. No ideas are good. Only the old idea. Well, there's another difference. But Robert, what is the harm in going through the staple line? If we don't go through the staple line, I had one case of stricture at gastrojejunostomy. So going through the staple line kind of... Splits know, it open. Splits it open. Uh, so Dr. Kular, could you uh, repeat that again? We didn't hear it loud if, enough. That's a very valid go, point you're making. Like he has fired the stapler through the <laughs> staple line. It splits the staple line. Otherwise, this staple line will be... Intact. Intact and it will put Potential. pressure on the gastro-J. And it can cause a stricture. I have had a case of stricture which could not be dilated even with the endoscope because we had the, the staple line. line on the... Because when we suture in the second layer, we will tend to take this suture line on the gastro -J, I agree. The staple line. I agree. So, that's a small little... So, so, I, I can't, I, so, uh, earlier you were not splitting the staple line and now you have started doing it. So, I stopped the splitting like uh, <laughs> uh, you are saying. I, I stopped. I thought it might not be good to split it. But uh, now again I started splitting it after that case. Because now you see the gastro -J will be totally relaxed. Uh, but Dr. Kular, if you are firing 60 millimeters, then the chances of narrowing are quite limited. No, 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 that's a misunderstanding because the outlet is always only as big as the, as the small bowel, as you know. So we shouldn't get confused just because you have a 60 that you have a bigger small bowel. The outlet can never be bigger, as you know from your basic general surgery. Okay, you can, uh, anesthesia? Hi, excuse me for interrupting, I apologize. Very, very gently, we'd like to advance the bougie now, very gently, please. They want us to yeah. be fast, so can we fire a stapler on it? Yeah. Stop. Yeah, they, they want it to be fast. Okay, well, that's... Yeah, let's do a stapler. Sorry. No, no, stop, stop. Okay, stop. Yeah. Not yet. We can close it with a stapler. Yeah, it will close with staples. I agree. Advance a little. Good, very good. How does it good. help stop. Dr. Rutledge? By that's good, stop. Sir? How does it help by introducing the bougie into the... I will show you in one moment. Uh, we are about to see why it is a good idea. Grasper? Uh, can I ask in the Staple audience gun? Who, who all are doing MGB Put here? that down, put that down, put that down, put that down. Right. So I can see quite a few hands being raised when I ask who all are doing MGBs. So I would request people who are doing MGBs and who are not, uh, you know, so far participated in the question answer to kindly... Uh, take the mic and give your comment if you are doing the steps you have exactly hand? as Robert is doing or you are doing differently so that we can use the opportunity to ask Robert what he thinks about our modification. So I'll start with Lakshmi here. Uh, Arun, till this step I do exactly what he does uh, but uh, I don't uh, pass the booze into the bowel because he is using a stapler to close the gastroenterotomy, I do hands-on. So in hands-on you have a control of yeah, how much uh, lumen narrowing you are doing. I think he is doing that to avoid stenosis. Because yeah, hands-on is very good. Right. So Lakshmi does hands-on and uh, I actually do this robotically so I also do it hands-on. Uh, anyone else who raised their hand? Can I? Yeah. Uh, Om has a comment here. Okay, Dr. Kula. Yeah. yeah. Well, I stand in between the leg and do the uh, surgery. One, one more, no. One more staple and, uh, cartridge. Ports are almost the same uh, as we do in Roux and Y gastric bypass, except that I fire my first stapler uh, from the epigastric port, which is way up. And remaining, uh, everything is almost the same, and uh, we do hand sewn closer. Withdraw the bridge slightly, just one centimeter. Robert? Yes. Ohm says that he stands between the legs. Of course, th that's a person's choice. Uh, th what I do is not necessarily right. Don't, don't think it ha must be this way. Think of, again, it's a jumping off point for you to think about things. My bias yeah. is the technique that I use is not necessarily right. It's just one that I have used. It, okay. It's okay. not necessarily right. right. See, now he's completed his, he's added to his comment saying that, but now on I'm going to do it this way. <laughs> Uh, Buji is the gastric calibration tube. Hello, Hello. Hello. Sure. Just last fire. Hello. Oh, okay, yeah. 
Sure. Yes. Sir, can we go to other OT? Yes, of course. Right. Well, one, more, one more question here. I'll just pass it on. Uh, uh, Robert, what is the bougie you are using over here? Uh, I use whatever they give me. I use in the United States a much smaller one. Uh, here in the uh, India, I think you have only the one size, the 36. Yeah. Because uh, Robert, uh, what I remember is when you operated in our center in Ludhiana, DMC hospital, so you had some problem with the bougie. You wanted a small bougie. You didn't want the standard one. Yes, sir. We were facing problem closing the interior layer with the staple. Yes, sir. You're right. And I, I have learned to suffer and be quiet about that. So, so what can we do? What kind of bougie can we do? Because we also had difficulty doing the same step. When I, think, it. I no. think it's possible if you use the 60 to go ahead and, and use the large bougie. Yeah. And you, use had a, you had a comment? Yeah, well, one more comment here. No, I'm Dr. Shivram. OD3, you are connected. Last OC meeting in Bangalore, we had a lot of resistance 45? for MGB. So our stand has changed compared to last year or... I also use hand soon anastomosis, yeah, no. closing the point. Uh, no, I think that is a theoretical discussion which we will do amongst. Right now, we were, you know, talking about the technique. So we are not talking about whether MGB should be done or not, and uh, pros and cons. We were only discussing the technique. Yes, uh, we are back with you. Yeah, I have uh, you know, started stapling. Uh, this had a lot of thick fat, almost two layers of fat. So we had a bit slow, uh, and uh, the Robert, we are with you. Uh, Robert, can you hear us? Let's just keep it for a while. I'm not Dr. Robert, you are on, sir. Dr. Rutledge, can you hear us? Let's pack it for a while. Robert, you just want to. We, we all, from the, on behalf oh, of the entire I mean, faculty and the audience here, thank you for the excellent demonstration of the MGB. We'll just take it later, otherwise there will be hernia. Because you, you are too much stressing on the bleeding, that's why it is bleeding. Okay. Thank you, Ratlin. It was there. It was very nice demonstration, and you made all the steps very clear, and made them look very simple. So these stitches which you have put, I can see one stitch on the top. Is that to prevent any kinking? Put this here. Nikal le. Ya pehle. Hai mujhe stress kar lete pehle. Right. Ha. Just leave it here. Just leave it here. We'll take you and join you at the discussion during the remaining. Can I be Mary Lynn? Where I think a lot of people have questions to ask you, and this surgery has definitely generated 
a lot of interest and you really made it look simple Ready, Ghani? I think we can come from here. This is the area just moving. So we move on. There's a big round of applause. I'm trying to capture it in the mic. And we move on to the next theatre. Section. Yeah, one one question here. Robert, please stay with us. Section. You have you do a what? Would you do a endoscopy or you do a machine? Do what? What what test you do for this? Air insufflation. You can take a methylene blue. Uh, methylene blue? Sure. No, no, question is what length okay. did you use we'll here? Okay, we'll do that. We'll